Father, we thank you. We give you honor and glory and praise for today, for this is truly yet again another day that you have made and we shall continue to rejoice and be glad in it. Father, your word says where two or three are gathered together in your name, there you are in the midst of them. And I thank you, Father, for having the opportunity to spend some time with and fellowship with a newfound brother in the kingdom, my brother Denzel. Father, talking about the establishment of your kingdom in and through us here in the earth realm. I thank you, Father, that as we open our mild, mouths wide, according to Psalm 8110, that you will fill them. I thank you, Father, for each of us being blessed by one another's presence and words. And Father, we thank you ultimately for every person whose life this video will touch, every person that will view it, every person that will hear the words that we will speak. We thank you, Father, that your words will be spirit and life unto them. Now, Father, we invite and invoke the presence of your glory here on this line with us, that you would get the glory. And we thank you for all things being well in the matchless and mighty name of Jesus, who is the Christ, our Savior, our Lord, and our King. We have prayed. Amen and amen. Amen. Thank you very much. Hello and welcome Velocity Banking students, Kingdom citizens, loyal subscribers, and new people. My name is Denzel Rodriguez, the personal finance geek of the 21st century. On this YouTube channel, we cover the Velocity Banking concept, infinite banking, and kingdom authority. In today's video, we're going to be discussing kingdom concepts, kingdom theology, kingdom conversations. And I have a very special guest with me today by the name of Howard Rose. And I'd like to introduce you guys today to Mr. Howard. Howard, how are you doing? I'm doing well, Denzel. Thank you so much for having me on today, man. It's an honor and a privilege. Thank you so much. Yeah, give us uh, a bit of an introduction of who you are and um, some of the things, some of the projects you're working on, your business, what it is that you do in the kingdom, and some of the things that you'd like to really expose to my audience today. And just to let you know, the type of audience that you're dealing with is in the range of 30 to 55 years old. You're dealing with mostly people in the United States. We have some Canadian listeners, people in the UK, people in Australia, but majority of our audience is all over the United States. You're dealing with uh, all walks of life, primarily families, households, husbands and wives. Um, and I have a really large audience of single moms, divorced moms, widowed moms, people that are looking to improve their personal finances. So we're going to be approaching things from the faith component, the faith element in terms of how we access tools in this world to achieve the financial freedom levels or abundance levels, the desires that we as humans uh, would like to have and operate in in this world. So just want to give you that little uh, understanding of who you're dealing with today. Um, so sure. off to you. Sure. Well, the Lord started me on this journey uh, some years ago, actually. Uh, I have to say, uh, well, I've, I've been a believer for a very long time, uh, since I was uh, very young. I remember uh, actually the Lord bringing me uh, back to remembrance for when I gave my life to him, which was when I was a child, man, in California, and I was about maybe seven or eight years old. And uh, I just remember hearing the call and going up to the altar, giving my life to the Lord. And the Lord watched over me all of those years. And uh, then fast forward all the way up to, uh, say, 2009, when I met my, my present wife, because uh, I'm in my second marriage right now. And uh, she is the most kingdom uh, oriented person I have ever met in my entire life. And God used her in an immense way. Uh, to do some incredible things in my life. And so that was in 2009. In 2010, I said something to the Lord uh, that I I don't think I really understood the depth of what I asked for. And, you know, they say, be careful of what you ask for because you just might get it. Um, and I know that the Father took me seriously when I, I asked him this, but I said, Lord, I want you to to unlearn me of everything that is not kingdom and teach me about kingdom from your perspective. And over the, the next few years, he began to do that. And then in 2013, he like kicked things up to a, a real high notch, uh, much higher than what I was accustomed to living uh, at. And uh, I won't go into the complete depth of uh, all of the, the details of what happened, but uh, it was another instance in him using my wife uh, to bring me to this place. And um, God one day 
told me to turn off me listening to Dr. Miles Monroe. And if any of you know anything about him or who he was, um, he was one of the most profound and prolific uh, kingdompreneurs, if I could call him that, uh, of our time. He passed away in 2014. He and his, uh, his beautiful wife, they were all in a plane crash and they passed away. But up to that point, God had already begun dealing with me uh, from his perspective. In fact, I was listening to Dr. Miles, Dr. Miles Monroe's Rediscovering the Kingdom series. And he told me one day in September of 2013 to turn it off. And I said, turn it off? Why? He said, turn it off because now I want to begin to teach you about kingdom from my perspective. And uh, it was, if I could say it this way without being derogatory, I, I don't mean it in a derogatory manner, but it was a wild ride. I mean, God heightening my level of sensitivity and being able to hear him clearer than I had ever heard him before. And then he just began to download these nuggets to me from the kingdom and uh, just about everything I committed to writing it down. Uh, then he used my wife to uh, uh, get the word to me that I needed to write a book. So I wrote my my first book uh, back in 2013, which was called Success Thoughts Life Confessions. But after I wrote and published that book, he told me he wanted me to do a total of seven more. Uh, and all of those really contain the heart of where I got my start in learning about kingdom from another perspective. Uh, Understanding Kingdom Commonwealth was originally titled Money and Kingdom Commonwealth, and it got changed later on. But uh, that's kind of where all of this uh, started from. Gotcha. And how many books have you written to date now? Because I was on your uh, uh, I was on your website, and uh, I was like, wow, there's a lot of Kingdom books here, a lot of content. Um, I have published uh, 30 thus far. Uh, but there's like uh, quite a few more that's waiting. I have a handful that's waiting to be published right now that I've finished writing and a ton of others that I'm, I'm in the process of writing or haven't started writing. And uh, gotcha. uh, I'm looking forward to getting those out there. Okay, and if you had to um, kind of put a, a bit of order to the books you've written, here on the on the board here just so the audience can see i recently bought myself some books um in your store okay. um the first book i read was understanding kingdom commonwealth from you because you actually sent uh -huh. that to me as a gift yeah. so I, yeah. I read that and then last uh, a, a couple days ago i just received um, understanding kingdom government understanding kingdom living and then I also bought your book on oh. um, rainbows in the kingdom, which is how to oh. address, how to address and oh. communicate with the LGBTQ community. I think there's a huge opportunity for yes. kingdom people yes. to have kingdom conversations, dialogue with that particular group. And mm -hmm. there's, there's, there's things that the LGBTQ community can actually teach the church believe it or not um mm -hmm. that's just my perspective mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. I i observe that community here and there i've been involved in in certain things with them in mm -hmm. the past and one of my biggest takeaways is the simple ability that they have to organize and come together to mm -hmm. ach achieve certain rights certain things that they want for their community and how fast and effective they're they're able to be so I, I find that very interesting to the perspective of as a kingdom citizen how can how can i do the same how can i share the same message how can i be as impactful as as they are yeah. even though i agree with absolutely nothing that they um believe in right that the, the, mm -hmm. their core beliefs i don't have to agree with it but i can also appreciate and not admire but just appreciate what or, or how they're doing mm -hmm. certain things mm -hmm. how they're able to come together in mm -hmm. in a in a in this constant struggle how they're able to put their individual needs aside and actually come as a community and address the needs of the community which is something yeah. I think the church um can improve uh something that we've mm -hmm. been lacking we can absolutely improve on so i like can i, can that I say book something in regards to that something. go ahead yeah I, I i it's funny that you would even uh, uh touch on that book um first of all that book dropped in my spirit like right around when we got started with getting ready to do this this video and i don't know why i guess i know why now but um that book was 
written and inspired around the time when the government made the decision to legalize same-sex marriage. And um, there's a whole story behind it, but to not belabor the time or what have you, um, I have had some intimate dealings in that community as well. Um, I've had um, a heart for that community and, and, and sect of people. And, and I believe that they're just that, they're people. And as far as the church is concerned, um, I, I agree wholeheartedly with what you said in you know, some things that we can learn from them. Uh, but at the same token, I believe that the church needs to step back and take a, a kingdom perspective on the LGBTQ community and how we have entreated them um, and really get the heart of God for our people, I will call them ours because there are some people in that community that are believers. Yes. They are. And quite um, a few. I, quite a few, so, believe it or not. Yeah. And and I don't um I don't believe in the way the church has handled them uh over the years. Again, it's it's there's a whole nother story uh behind it uh, and and my reason for even writing that book. And I believe that I'll probably do a, another uh revision of that because there's more things that have come to me since then i wrote that book in 2015 wrote and published it uh then um and a lot has taken place and transpired since then but um that that's one of the books that i've published that's near and dear to my heart gotcha gotcha so with that being said um is there like a bit of an order of someone that's like trying to learn about the kingdom you know learn about what it is and what it is not right the difference between religion and kingdom how there is a vast you know difference in foundations um if you were to kind of put a bit of an order to like get these three books or get these five books to kind of start your journey on understanding kingdom and and the components within it the structures within it in which order would you um, recommend my audience to start you know acquiring oh man i i don't think i've ever been asked that question before but since you have um it would probably begin with um oh man would it be understanding kingdom well, Commonwealth? I, I would say kingdom commonwealth would probably be first okay um with understanding kingdom life behind it um and then you know if you're talking about those three i would say in in that order with government at the end uh but there are several other books that uh i know that aren't here on the screen but right. uh like the dominion mandate uh would be a part of the lineup as well uh okay. go and sin no more according to your word seed and soil um i don't know it's it's Okay. it's kind of hard but if i had to just pick like, my like top if we had to boil it to like maybe three books like three boom boom, boom yeah three, three, understanding three, kingdom three, commonwealth three. yeah commonwealth um life and uh and yep. government those three that you have okay. there i believe that they begin to set the foundation mm -hmm. um for getting an understanding of what kingdom is uh, according to those particular titles, because there's still, excuse me, more that I have not actually published that I've written uh, that goes along with that. And, you know, I, there's certain subject matters that I do need to, to deal with. I feel like what you mentioned a moment ago, dealing with uh, the difference between um, living in kingdom and, and living in religion or tradition or denomination or what have you, you know, just certain subject matters and things that um, that God has given me different nuggets on and things like that over the years and whatnot that I feel need to be addressed. And then I think that there's something that needs to uh, be like a basic rudimentary foundational uh, type blueprint, if you will. You know, I, I like to call it writing things down in crayon and uh, making it very simple and plain for the new believer uh, to start from here and to progress kind of from there. Perfect. So I'm, I'm glad because that was my assessment when I went on your website, when I went on Amazon, I, I looked at everything and I, that was my kind of choice. So I just wanted to kind of confirm it and verify it. So I do appreciate it. Starting with understanding sure. kingdom commonwealth, then going to kingdom living, and then understanding kingdom government, and then, you know, maybe dominion mandate, uh, sin mm -hmm. no more, onward and onward. But those three main books here that I have on the board, I'm glad I, I chose correctly. So w with that being said, I believe 
it would be very advantageous to talk about some of those fundamental building blocks. And we can simply start with, you know, what is the kingdom? Um, mm -hmm. Oftentimes in the church, different churches that I've attended, both Catholic and Christian, I've heard the term kingdom of God, and I've heard mm -hmm. the term kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. And I may be incorrect, and this is a moment of a course correction that kingdom of God, kingdom of heaven are two different kingdoms or one in the same interchangeable, sometimes used interchangeably when I'm speaking mm -hmm. with people in that sense. What I've noticed in your book, when I read it, you're very intentional with words that you use. Um, <laughs> and so with that, cause our, our language is very, very key, especially when we're reading the Bible, one word, even in law. Um, you know, my girlfriend's studying to become a lawyer and, you know, one word can change the whole case, right? <laughs> yeah. One word can change the whole meaning and judgment of a case. So being very, yeah. very strategic and intent with how we speak is one of, I would say, the foundational layers of walking and living and speaking in kingdom is your language. You probably just start there. Yeah. So my first question yeah. is what is kingdom and what it is not right like we can oh. so we can kind of build some identifying blocks and I'll, I'll take notes for the audience as well and i encourage those who are watching to take notes as well okay well uh, the kingdom of god um i have come to learn and from the revelation that the lord has has given me about what the kingdom of god is uh, first of all, I believe kingdom of God is a place. Kingdom of heaven is a system. Um, and kingdom in and of itself, if you break the word down, it's comprised of, of two different words, king and dominion or domain. So you can't be a king without territory, basically. Um, in Genesis 1 and 26, God said, um, let us make man in our image and after our likeness and let them have dominion over all the earth. Uh, now in uh, the, the book of Psalms, uh, I believe it's 115, 16, the Bible says uh, the heavens, even the heavens belong to the Lord, but the earth hath he given to the children of men. Um, we have to understand that God gave the earth realm to us, those of us who live here. And I believe that he intended for us to rule earth like he rules heaven. And so when you talk about taking dominion in the earth realm, the missing component that I've not really heard anybody preach, teach, talk about, what have you, is what is the standard? What is the system that we're supposed to utilize? Because the Bible does say uh, that the kingdom of God is not meat or drink, but it's righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost, okay? I've heard people preach that for years, but I've come to learn and understand that the kingdom of God is a system. It is a methodology. It is a way of doing things. It is God's kingdom government in motion, in action, in and through us in the earth realm. And I believe this is the standard that we are supposed to utilize to take dominion in the earth. And when you look at it from the standpoint of utilizing that standard in our lives, so that means that to the point or up to the point that you were introduced to kingdom, every last one of us on this planet developed our own systematic methodology and way of doing things, handling things, uh, handling relationships, how we handle finances, just everything that pertains to our life and living in the earth realm. Each and every one of us developed our own standard of how that's done, which is why we see in the earth realm, <clears throat> excuse me, all of the different countries that exist that all have all of these different governments. There's no two governments on the face of this planet that I know of that are exactly the same. They may have similarities, but none of them are the, the same unless you're talking about uh, a country that has dominion in another territory, another part of the earth. But in any case, uh, as it relates to what kingdom is, I believe that's what kingdom is. I don't believe that it is religion, denomination, tradition. Jesus said, your traditions have made the word of God to no effect or no avail. And so I grew up Catholic. <laughs> Most yeah. people might find that hard to believe, 
but I grew up Catholic, so I know what the Catholic Church is like. I've gone through some of the sacraments and the whole nine, mm -hmm. you know, so uh, I, I recognized a lot of things uh, in my youth becoming a believer. And I feel like the veil or a veil was pulled off of my eyes. And so I was able to see things. I didn't realize I was looking at things from a kingdom perspective back then, but I was because God was like pointing different things out to me. And I started asking my mom, well, like, why do we have to do this? And why do we have to do this? And it was happening at such an alarming rate. She was like, look, I don't know. I don't understand. Just, just do it. You know? Mm, right. So, um, I don't believe that it's, uh, um, a lot of things, uh, that we have deemed kingdom to be. I, and I also believe that we have to get our definition of what kingdom is from him or a noted authority that bears witness with our spirit. And we know that this is kingdom that God is sharing with, with us because the Bible says spirit bears witness with spirit. And so if you are endeavoring to be in tune with Holy Spirit, when you hear somebody else speak about kingdom or speak the words of God or the word of God, not just what we look at as the Bible or written content that we refer to on a daily basis, but the proceeding word that flows forth out of his mouth that pertains to our daily lives. When you hear someone speaking that, then your spirit should be able to bear witness with that, with you having Holy Spirit on the inside of you, guiding you. Okay. So let's let's recap on that. Kingdom of heaven is a place. Kingdom of God is a system. When we look at the word kingdom, it's two words in one, king and dominion, which is implying that in a kingdom, there's a king and mm -hmm. the king has dominion, dominance over a place and a system, mm -hmm. a system that operates in the place, right? So you mm -hmm. can have a place called earth and then mm -hmm. in the earth, there are system or systems. Mm -hmm. And we as individuals, we have the free will to pick the place and system that we want to live under, that we want right. to live in, right? Mm -hmm. And so for a lot of my viewers that are watching are all different types of religions. I got Catholics, Christians, Methodists, Baptists, um, uh, Seventh-day Adventists. I've got Mormons that watch me. I've got a, a few Muslim groups. Um, I know I've got a pretty decent size, a small size Asian community that watches me. So these are all religions. And when we're looking at what is and what is not, what are some uh, verifying action steps that I can take to say verify that this kingdom is, is actually a real thing, right? Just like how oftentimes when we're conversating back and forth having debates on different religions which religion is the right one and which one's not and, you know there's hundreds of thousands of religions and all these different religions are arguing against each other on on the theology of the religion but then there's something like under all of that that uh that we can possibly get to so my question is, and this is something I struggled with, somewhat continue to, is at what point does the religion, can the religion live in the kingdom? Or does the individual have to say renounce or, or convert to said kingdom and leave religion behind? Or is there a, a, a possibility of having both? Where in my head, I'm kind of at this place where I look at every single religion that's out there, the one that I resonate most with tends to be Christians or Christianity. Mm -hmm. And so I, I take the traditions and the some of the systems and I bring that into kingdom. Now, am I in the wrong for that or is there some room for correction, you know, in that kind of space there? That's that's something that I, I, I dealt with. And I think mm -hmm. a lot of my viewers are because they ask me, they're like, so you're Christian. So, and I'm like, I'm kingdom. I <laughs> am a citizen of the kingdom. So it's like, oh, so what religion is that? I said, well, <laughs> a kingdom is a territory. It's a, it's a physical, tangible place. I can actually see it. It, it has systems. It has governments, it has rulings. It has like, I can walk into a court and be recognized as a sovereign in this kingdom. I, I, I <laughs> have a jurisdiction, right? I have rights in a religion 
that is ignored in court. There, there, it doesn't have as much standing in, in the actual courts of the world, so to speak, right? So it has this, this higher level of, of authority. And so sometimes I have trouble kind of distincting that. So being able to talk with you, I think maybe you can provide, you know, shed some light on this. Uh, so I'll kind of rephrase it again. When we're dealing with new people discovering kingdom, again, looking at what is and what is not, can religion live in the kingdom? Or is it something that has to be completely separated? I think um, there, there's so much that you've that you've said, uh, even in your question, and it sounded like a compounded uh, question a little bit. Uh, so I'll endeavor to answer it as uh, uh, specifically and articulately as I can. Uh, first of all, um, what I have come to understand about the kingdom of God is that it is the highest authority there is in the entire universe because the one who resides over the kingdom the king in the kingdom is the father now i understand that jesus we we look at jesus as the king of kings and the lord of lords he is referred to as such but even he when he was in the fullness of his ministry here in the earth realm he always pointed everything and everyone back to the father okay being that he is the one who has basically set the bar and the standard for everything he's the one who has uh, uh established the government which entails its laws its statutes its precepts its concepts ordinances testimonies commandments judgments all of those things that make up and comprise the government or the governmental order of the kingdom of God. Okay, so if that be so, one of the things that um, he ministered to my heart is that the kingdom of God will come subject to nothing less than itself. So to ask if any of these religions can exist in the kingdom of God, I would say that a person may enter into the kingdom with those beliefs, but at some point, the more you are exposed to kingdom, the more you will be forced to make a decision. Either you will accept kingdom and abide by kingdom, or you will continue to abide by the way that you've been doing things. Now, for the sake of definition, and since I, I love words, and you noted that earlier, I wanted to open up the definition of the word religion as it's given on dictionary.com. This is my main go-to reference. I use dictionary.com and Webster as well. But the definition of the word religion is a set of beliefs concerning the cause, nature, and purpose of the universe, especially when considered as the creation of a superhuman agency or agencies, excuse me, usually involving devotional and ritual observances and often containing a moral code governing the conduct of human affairs. Okay. Another definition says a specific fundamental set of beliefs and practices generally agreed upon by a number of persons or sects, S-E-C-T-S. -E um, when you go back and you look at um, the history of what we refer to as different religions, because that's how we were raised. And, and again, we have to look at this from the perspective of how we came up, how we were reared, the environment we came up in, what we were exposed to. All of those things play a part in uh, uh, going back to the, the question that you said that many people ask you, what religion are you? Okay. Um, when we look at things from a kingdom-based perspective, or hold on, let me back out of that. So okay. talking about the, the religions and where they got their start, if you look at uh, like the Lutheran religion that was started by a person. Correct. Martin Luther. When you talk about uh, the Methodist religion or faith, that was started by a person. Forgive me, I, I don't recall uh, immediately the gentleman's name who started that. But Or, or Seventh-day Adventist, that was Seventh-day Adventist, Ellen B. Pentecostal, White. all of these. Uh, oh, they hi. were all started by a, a person. And, and if you notice and look at each one of those religions, they have their own code, they have their own moral ethics, they have their their own methodology and system and way of doing things. They have a way of dictating to people, look, this is how you're supposed to live. Like with Pentecostals, they don't, uh, many of them don't believe in uh, the women uh, wearing makeup and not cutting their hair and not wearing pants and the men uh, being clean shaven. They, uh, most men that I've seen, they, they don't have a beard or, or a mustache. 
uh, they keep a, a nice, uh, a short haircut and what have you. Um, and the list goes on for, you know, every religion, there's some type of standard or code, mm -hmm. but this is something that men put in place mm -hmm. when it comes to us being believers in the kingdom. I don't believe God is looking at whether we wear makeup or not. Um, I don't think he cares about the length of our hair, whether it's short or long, whether we wear pants or not, or any of that kind of stuff. First Samuel 16, seven, which is my favorite biblical passage in the entire book, if you will. It's God says, uh, man does not see as God sees for man looks on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. So when we come to him, he's looking at the contents of our heart. Now in coming into the kingdom, the main prerequisite for anyone being in the kingdom, just like it is for any religion is all based on one simple word. And Jesus preached, taught, ministered using this one word a multiplicity of times more than he used any other word that I could find. And that word is belief. It's belief. Every last one of the religions that, that exists on the face of this planet are founded upon beliefs. How we live our lives is based on belief. You coming into the kingdom is based on belief. What is the belief principle? That is whatever information it is that is presented to you from the other side, whether or not you choose to open up and embrace that and make that a part of your lifestyle, how you live, your, your, your system of beliefs, okay? And coming into the kingdom at some point, because God has a way of uh, ministering to an individual if they are open enough to where what you see and experience in kingdom will eventually begin to replace everything that is not like it. Gotcha. I hope that makes sense and, and yeah, answers your and, question. And just looking at the outward things that we do from a logical or, or a scientific uh, perspective, you know, just take the idea of having a beard or not having a beard, having hair on your face or having no hair on your face. When you look at the entire body, if I'm not mistaken, all over your entire body is hair. Mm -hmm. There's hair that you can't even see. Very, right. very, very, very small little follicles. So mm -hmm. to just focus on say the beard, I know there's a scripture that talks about having no beard or something like that, like thou shalt shave thine beard or something like that, right? And that becomes uh -huh. a whole, that becomes a whole, you know what I mean? Like if you're not, if you don't have, if, if you don't have this, you're not one of us, right. so to speak. You know, you're right. not saved if you don't do right. X, Y, and Z. Right. Um, but when we look at it from a, a scientific point of view, if I live in Alaska, it would be ideal for me to grow my beard to protect me from the harsh yeah. weather. Right. And then again, the whole fact about, well, you know, if I can't have hair here, well then what about the hairs that are on my cheeks that you can't see? What about the hairs that are on my forehead that you can't see? Like people have little, 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 little microscopic follicle hairs all over our yeah. body. So yeah. you begin to kind of unlearn and relearn these little ways of doing things, these, these traditional ways of doing things. And what you're saying is when a person decides to enter the kingdom initially based off of belief so they mm -hmm. believe in the kingdom they believe the kingdom is real and they believe that this is the right way to go mm -hmm. once they are in it they begin to discover oh um on mondays i'll wear makeup and on tuesdays i won't mm -hmm. I, on monday i'll wear a skirt and on tuesday i'll wear jeans um <laughs> it it seems like there is a higher focus when you're in kingdom on the belief what's inward in your heart um and then in addition to that the way you operate when you're wearing certain clothes so the, mm -hmm. the way you operate when you um cut your hair a certain way it's more so in the intent you know? mm -hmm. am i am i having this beard or am i wearing these clothes to attract other kingdom people to attract people to righteous way of living or am i wearing these clothes in a provocative way to spark a different reaction mm -hmm. that, that mm -hmm. is not kingdom based so if it's Mm -hmm. of if it's of ill intent then it is not wise because i i read in your book that you know god created everything but he allowed man to 
operate in a way that he saw fit so mm -hmm. that could mean the way we use money that could mean the the way we dress like mm -hmm. kind of gives us a authority to dress according to mm -hmm. the weather right so to speak mm -hmm. going back mm -hmm. to kind of like the logical like i'm not gonna wear a, a shorts and a tank top in negative degree weather it, it's not ideal mm -hmm. and i'm not also gonna wear um three four five seven layers of clothing in 90 degree weather having a tank top that shows arms is not the end of the world you know like mm -hmm. it, it it would seem like at some point these traditions causes conflicts that are both logically creating an obstacle mm -hmm. you know? i mean i went i went to a water park and i saw a specific group of of Jews that dress a certain way. And I'm like, that's mm -hmm. gotta be totally uncomfortable. I mean, you, you've got <laughs> wearing these long uh, uh, skirts that covers, you know, obviously the whole entire body. You're at a freaking water park. Um, <laughs> you might get, you might get stuck on something on the, on the slide down. I mean, God forbid. <laughs> so it, you know, it causes like unnecessary stress or, or, or suffering yeah. when you start analyzing the outward, when the whole time in the kingdom, God's focus on the in, the in, the heart and, and the belief. It seems like yeah. that's your whole point of you're slowly but surely removing these traditions, which is why in a way religion is very, 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 very hard to exist um, at its fullness in the kingdom. Because kingdom, kingdom yeah. is kingdom is essentially replacing uh, right those those um, ways of being in that particular religion. Yeah, I I want to go back to to something a a, a moment ago that was said, um, or or that I had stated. You know, when I believe when you come into contact with kingdom, um, the more you are exposed to God, because God will never change. He's not going to change. And his force is greater than yours. So if it's about a, a duel of who's going to win between the two of you, oh, he will win hands down every time. Mm -hmm. um, my, my wife said something uh, that the Lord uh, revealed to her uh, sometime last year. I think it was about the middle going towards the end of last year. And it was a very, very profound statement. I believe that it's applicable here in this juncture of, uh, of our talk. She said, when man does not understand the ways of God, he creates something that he can understand. And I look at religion, denomination, all of the things, tradition, that all of those things that are encompassed within that ball um, of belief systems being tied directly to that statement from the standpoint of man creating something that he could understand, not uh, having the level of relationship that he could have with God. Uh, religion spends a lot of time pointing the finger, uh, demeaning, uh, telling you what you should and should not do, mm -hmm. as opposed to doing like what Jesus did. Everything Jesus did or in everything that he did, he always pointed us back into the direction of the Father. And if you have Holy Spirit living on the inside of you as a believer, Holy Spirit knows how to deal with you accordingly. He knows how to speak to you. He knows everything about you. He knows how you think. So therefore he knows how to minister to you in a way that will cause you to change your paradigm of thought process. Because in our belief system, thought process is directly tied to that, how we think and the thoughts and the, the things that we think about. It ties directly into our beliefs. So he will bring about what we refer to as a conscious interrupt. That's what kingdom does most of the time, if not all the time. It brings about a conscious interrupt into our lives where we can see life from God's perspective, not just another perspective, but from God's perspective. And I think that's extremely important for us to see things from his perspective and not that of our own or another person or something that we heard somebody else say. It's important to get his perspective. Um, I wrote a book um, called The Absolution of Kingdom Truth. And the basic premise of that book means that no matter what level of truth you have built for yourself or what level of truth you aim at believing there's always if it's not kingdom if it's not god there's always a higher level of truth and god reserves the absolute right for his truth 
to trump anything else that we may claim is truth true. in the earth realm and so again coming into kingdom we are being introduced to who truth is what truth we actually need to apply to our lives so that we can fulfill the uh what i affectionately refer to as the the dominion mandate genesis 1 and 26 that we have dominion over all the earth and the only way that we can fulfill that mandate is by accepting his truth our thoughts and ways becoming like his because remember the bible uh, uh there's a, a, a scripture in isaiah where god said for my thoughts are not your thoughts and my ways are not your ways." well one of the things that he ministered to me concerning that particular biblical passage he said i wasn't saying uh howard that that my thought process and my ways are something that are so high that it's unachievable or unattainable. I made you like me. So if I made you like me, then your thoughts and your ways ought to be just like mine, right. where mine are. And when you're not thinking like me, when you're not doing things like me, then you're living life beneath your means at a level that I didn't ordain for you to live at. And so it behooves us to come up to that standard and not live beneath it so that we can fulfill the mandate and we can live the, the most prosperous life. We can live the happiest life. As they say out there in the world nowadays, we can live our best life. To go a layer deeper, right? We've been really uh, cracking open these keys to the kingdom here mm -hmm. uh, there seems to be kingdom focus that we just don't see in our upbringing in the different religions that you and i have both participated in as well as the viewers listening what are some kingdom focuses that pivotable and how do we verify that this is kingdom and not just another religion so to speak or, or just another perspective that this is the perspective how do we verify absolute truth in that sense but from a kingdom <laughs> angle right? i what think are, what the, are some the, things you do or, uh, or or does the bible give us instruction on how to rightly divide oh, absolutely it does uh the the number one thing that i tell people that is most important in the kingdom of god is to develop your relationship with holy spirit let me tell you why jesus told his disciples before he left the planet. He said, I'm going away to prepare a place for you, but I am sending one in my place. And he referred to Holy Spirit in this passage as the comforter. And he said that Holy Spirit would do three things that basically fulfill what you just asked. He said that he would guide us into all, all truth. He would show us things to come and he would bring all things back to our remembrance. I think it is extremely important to know that and to remember that because when you talk about truth, when you talk about verifying something that is or is not kingdom, the only one who can decipher, discern, uh, whatever that for you is Holy Spirit. The Bible says uh, for us to study, to show ourselves approved, a workman that needeth not being ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. The only way you can divide rightly the word of truth is through Holy Spirit. He is the one that is the verification factor. He's the one who knows all truth, absolute truth, part of the epitome of absolute truth. And if he knows all truth and knows all things, and Jesus said he would guide us into all truth, then we have to trust that. And when you trust that, then you become a son, according to Romans 8 and 14, for as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. God didn't call us Christians, he called us sons. Now I'm not knocking anyone that calls himself Christian. Please understand for those of you out there, in, in the, the realm of believers uh, that call yourself Christian, because I, I once called myself a Christian, but I don't anymore. And part of the reason for that is because when I learned the where that word even came from, that word is not a kingdom word. It's a word that was assigned to those who believed in what was called the way or the way that Jesus taught, the way that Jesus lived, those who were believers of the way, that term was given to them by pagan, not by God. So I refer to myself as a son or a believer in the kingdom of God. I also refer to myself as an ambassador because I am a representative of the country that I come from, which is the kingdom of God. And an ambassador carries the full weight and backing of the country 
that they represent and its government thereof. So uh, with me being a representative of the kingdom of God, I am a carrier. Those of us who are believers in the kingdom of God, you must understand we are carriers of the kingdom governmental order of God. We carry all of that on the inside of us. And whenever we get into a, a situation that calls for kingdom to rise up, like let's just refer to a legal matter because you touched on that earlier. If you had to go into a courtroom and and in natural uh, 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 in the in a natural court of law, um, what you don't know could hurt you, can hurt you. If you don't know the law, uh, that will be used against you. God doesn't operate that way, which is why we have Holy Spirit. And even what we naturally within our own physical brain, what we don't know, Holy Spirit knows how to bring it up into the forefront of our mind or bring it to us where we do know what it is that we need to know so that the devil doesn't run roughshod all over our lives. The only reason he's able to have access legally through our lives is for, uh, uh, because of ignorance and what we don't know. So it behooves us to get to know the government of God, to get to know his His uh, uh, His laws and his statutes and, and what have you. Um, but in, anyway, and going back to uh, what you were saying about how do we verify i believe that is how we verify it through having a relationship with holy spirit and the more you get to uh, uh, uh have a relationship with holy spirit the deeper your relationship is with him the the more uh you will be able to recognize things i remember uh or recognize things that are not uh, uh of the kingdom of god I remember the Lord telling me some years ago, he said, the closer you are to me, the better you're able to recognize the enemy. And it's not to say that we are not to uh, study the tactics uh, or the, the movements or actions of our, our enemies, but I don't think we should place more emphasis on that than we do learning about the kingdom that we say that we're a part of, learning uh, how Holy Spirit moves and operates, learning to, like Jesus said, he said, my sheep know my voice and a stranger's voice they will not follow. So the better our ear is fine-tuned to be able to hear Holy Spirit with clarity, the better that we, uh, the better we are able to sidestep landmines, the better when life situations happen, we can do like you asked earlier, we can verify okay this is of kingdom this is not of king gotcha all right so let's recap on that real quick take a look at the board here um okay. starting from the top again kingdom of heaven is a place kingdom of god is a system kingdom implies the word king and dominion a king that has dominion over a territory over a place over a system uh, mm -hmm. king of god is the highest authority in the universe so if you're looking at being in the highest achieving capacity level those of you who are entrepreneurs and you want to achieve high levels if you want to be in the top they call it the top one percent of your class so to speak uh, if you want to operate at such a high level um consider looking at the highest authority that there is okay then mm. that leads us to you know what kingdom is not kingdom is not a religion and kingdom mm -hmm. we were talking about focus right kingdom focuses one of the main things is having like you said one of the most priority prioritized thing is relationship with the holy spirit and there's three things yeah. that the holy spirit provides to the individual so you said uh guide i didn't get all the uh, he'll guide us into all truth so guiding the truth mm -hmm. right guide to truth mm -hmm. show things to so, come uh, almost come. like mm -hmm. almost like uh having a crystal ball right in a sense mm. uh being able to say oh go right go left go up mm -hmm. go down go back mm -hmm. takes two steps back like literally mm -hmm. giving you the pathway okay and then what was the third thing that the holy spirit uh provide to the he user? will bring all things back to our remembrance okay so remembering mm-hmm Mm -hmm. and i have come to a place remember of remember uh, is interesting because it's just yes and I, was, I wanted to speak on that real briefly because <laughs> okay, go ahead. um i i am uh i'm very careful with with my words more and more um uh, th there's a strong conviction that holy spirit has on me regarding the usage of words and um a lot of times my wife and i will be in conversation and she'll ask me something and I used to say, I don't remember. I don't remember. Well, when I make a reference to I, I have to remember that God calls himself the great I am. He is I am. And I am lives inside of me. 
And so anything that I say about I, I have to be careful because he lives in me and what I say should line up directly with who he is. Now, uh, I know that I still uh, have to deal with the natural person, my, my human nature, if you will. And so I no longer say I don't remember such and such because to say that I don't remember, I believe that words are powerful and they're carriers of energy and they cause things to happen uh, for us and to us in the earth realm. And so I believe if I keep saying I don't remember, then I won't remember. So instead I'll say, I don't immediately recall and things that I don't remember or rec uh, recall immediately, 9.9 .9 out of 10, I fall on Holy Spirit and I ask him, Holy Spirit, bring it back to my remembrance. And and he's faithful and just to do it. Gotcha. And so, so and break, break down the word remembrance or remember what what does that mean right in 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 kingdom right How, what are we coming back into right so just kind of open open that a little bit more because I, that's very very key and i know uh i think my girlfriend's Ooh. gonna my girlfriend's gonna mess with me on this now because i often tend to forget things uh, 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 uh -huh. about our relationship or things that we do or oh you don't remember this or, or you don't remember this and so i'm gonna be what well, well say moving forward i don't immediately recall that babe <laughs> <I don't, laughs> but uh when the holy spirit takes over it uh they will help me recall what it is that we did yeah four years ago on april 22nd at six o'clock p.m women have a very good way of recalling mm -hmm. and and remembering things um mm -hmm. i think generally speaking they can hold on to things quite well whereas um i just don't have that immediate skill uh, at the moment, but we'll obtain it. So I'm going to start. This is very helpful for me. I hope for the viewers as well, really paying attention to every word you use because forms and forges blockades in, in your mind. If it forges barriers mm -hmm. and obstacles, it just makes it even more difficult to access the keys to the kingdom, mm -hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, um, I, again, I believe that words are, are extremely powerful. And this was one of the reasons why I know uh, the Lord led me to write the book according to your words, uh, because our words, G God said this, he said in Isaiah 55, he said, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall go forth and accomplish that which I please. It shall not return unto me void and it will accomplish the thing whereunto I sent it. If God made us like unto himself, I really believe us keeping that in mind and remembering that, that he made us like it there out of everything that God created in the universe, the stars, the planets, planet earth, all of the plant life, the animals, the seas, water, earth, fire, everything that God created, even the angels. There is no other being anywhere that I know of that God created like himself none so if he made us like unto himself and in the beginning before the fall of man there was no sickness there was no disease there was no ailment no infirmity we were di directly connected with god even though we still had a will to make a choice and a decision as to what we would or would not do because if we didn't have a will uh, uh, the fall would have never taken place. Right. But before the fall happened, we were directly connected to him. I believe Holy Spirit lived on the inside of us then and that we had the ability to hear God with the ult uh, uh, utmost and ultimate level of clarity. There was no mistaking. The Bible talks about how uh, uh, God uh, walked with Adam in the cool of the day and talked to him. If, if God did that with him then, there's no difference in him doing it for us or with us now because we have been redeemed back into our rightful place in the father so when jesus died i don't believe he died just for sin he died to pay the cost to redeem us back to where we left off with god in the garden of eden so to for hope for jesus to say that he would bring all things back to our remembrance it's indicative to me that at some point, we had all knowledge already on the inside of us. Well, technically speaking, we still have that now for those of us who are believers because Holy Spirit lives on the inside of us. And so for him to bring all things back to our remembrance is bringing us back to our original state. Again, we go. where we first left off with that's God awesome. in the garden. That's what I was looking for right there. Original, say that again, original 
Intent. Our original state. Original uh -huh. state. Okay. Yeah, that's. Or some words. people. I've heard. I've heard some people refer to it as original man, which is fine as well. I I call it original state. I believe it's the same thing. Um, but I believe that the key thing to remember or to keep in mind is that God made us like unto himself. And so everything about him, all of his attributes, we have, the only thing we do not have over the Father is his authority. Everything that the Father is, so are we. If he's able to speak things out of his mouth, the Bible says that, that we can uh, uh, speak those things that be not as though they already were. Hmm. We, I'm sure you've experienced speaking things into existence, calling things out. Yeah, this whole, entire, now with me, <laughs> this whole entire business that I've uh, uh, been able to uh, rise up, the YouTube channel, all the people I've helped, like I literally spoke it before it happened and now it happened because uh -huh. I received the authority to do so. Absolutely. So it's, yeah. Absolutely. And I think that's very key, understanding the kingdom authority that you have and actually walking in that footprint and being it. I, I've, I've often said um, when God told us that there's two key scriptures where God spoke and he said, be ye holy as I am holy. Uh, and then Jesus said, be ye perfect even as your father, which is in heaven, is perfect. And I do not believe that God would ever, ever, ever tell us to do or be something that he did not already put within us the ability to do or be. If God said for us to have dominion, then we have it. We don't have to take dominion. We have it. All we have to do is walk it out. Claim the territory. Wherever the sole of your feet shall tread. If God said in Genesis 1, 28, uh, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it, we have the ability to do that. The only key ingredient that may be holding some people back is belief. Because you're not going to walk out or do something that you don't believe in. Which you can't wild. live something that you don't believe. And Which so whatever you believe, that's what your life is going to portray. That's what your life is going to exhibit. So for me, even now, knowing what I know, I'm careful about what I ask for. I had the father to ask me, or, or not ask me, but he, he made a comment to me some time ago. He said, you know, you haven't asked me for anything in a long time. I thought that was rather odd for him to say that because a lot of people go before God and they kind of treat him like a sugar daddy or a Santa Claus and, and ask him for all kinds of things. Uh -huh. But knowing what I know now and, and knowing that God has given me access to certain to realms. Ask less. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, you know, I'm careful for what I ask for because I want to make sure that what I ask for is in complete and total alignment with where I am. But then at the same time, admittedly, I've had to overcome some obstacles of confidence in my life, believe it or not. And that was in, in terms of uh, um, positive attributes in my character. The biggest thing that Holy Spirit has had to deal with me on was confidence because of a lot of things that I've come through. I've, I've lost a lot of things. I, I've had different situations to happen to me that were very, very traumatic, been through depression several times. And so uh, when you have live through things where you've experienced a level of loss. It, it takes, uh, uh, some people, it may take a certain type of toll on you. And so you become afraid to ask for anything because you're afraid I may ask for it, but then I'm gonna lose it yeah. at some point. It's very likely. Mm -hmm. So I've had to overcome that obstacle of lack of confidence. And I've watched Holy Spirit help me to build it up over the years. So that plays a part in what I actually speak and what I ask for. So let me come back to the board here, back to this kingdom focus. There's two things you've said so far that kingdom focuses on relationship with the Holy Spirit, belief, right? Mm -hmm. Holy Spirit is a guide to truth, show things to come, remember, which is to recall your original state. And what does mm. state, original state, what does that mean? Um, when we go back to our original state, is there a, another interpretation or, or word that helps us kind of comprehend that? Because I want to make sure that people really get what is happening when you are back in your original state of being. Um, you know, Jesus made the comment about having faith like a child. If you have ever observed children um, in their uh, early stages, you know, say when they start walking a around a year old, between say a year and four years old, children are absolutely 
fearless. They will do things um, without any kind of knowledge of in, uh, uh, possible impending dangers that may exist, um, how they could hurt themselves uh, or, or get hurt or, or hurt someone else. Um, so the original state to me is having that childlike faith where you believe God for things to come into manifestation and fruition that are so big and beyond you that you know it has to take him moving and doing certain things that you could not do on your own. Uh, original state uh, also goes back to and refers to when God made man and between the creation of man and the fall, a man having no sin in him. There was no sin in the beginning. There was no sickness. There was no disease, no ailment, no infirmity, none of that. Living our lives uh, from a standpoint uh, almost as if none of those things exist because in the kingdom, they don't. There's no sickness in the kingdom. Right. When we get sick, it's because of something happening or us being exposed to something or it could uh, depending on the situation, have something to do with our faith or our belief or whatnot. It could be a myriad of things. I don't believe it's just one in terms of why people get sick. I, my wife and I got sick back in, uh, in October. And I know, uh, or at least I believe the reason why we got sick uh, and we both had the flu, it wasn't COVID, um, but we got sick, I believe, because we had pushed our bodies uh, beyond uh, uh, its limits. And the very first thing that will begin to break down on you is your immune system, which is what allows you to get sick in the first place. And so I believe that's why we ended up getting sick. But for the most part, my wife and I, we don't get sick, really. I mean, we don't deal with with sickness, with being down, nowhere near like that or anything like that. And I had, since my wife and I, came together and my wife and I had been married for 12 years and the in, entire length of time that we have been uh, together, I cannot uh, absolutely recall ever being sick like that ever. Uh, matter of fact, I know that I haven't, not like what we were this past October and having the flu. I hadn't had the flu in years. I mean, probably about 15, almost 20 years. So uh, original state to me, takes me back to that. What was the original state of man in the beginning before the fall, before the fall happened? So when you look at everything from that perspective, um, with being complete and entire, wanting nothing, I believe that to me, that's what original state looks like. Gotcha. So it's this state of being that childlike fearlessness um, and then operating pre-fall, pre-sin. Mm -hmm. All right, so gotcha. So that is very, very clear. Now, I want to address something, uh, the elephant in the room here, which has to do with the, um, the state of our place in eternity and how we access that in the kingdom. So in religion, it seems like the focus is all about every little thing you need to do to go to heaven, to, to achieve eternity, eternal life, to be secured, sanctified, holy, wonderful, right? A lot of different religions operate in this way where you have to do X, Y, and Z to achieve your highest authority, your highest state, highest form of being, authority, etc., etc. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but it seems like this whole conversation regarding kingdom, whether this is a focus or not, but it seemed like uh, what I'm trying to figure out is what comes first relationship right establishing seeking out the kingdom first which results in building a relationship with the kingdom and finding out who's in the kingdom well we know so far that god is in this kingdom that he rules and there's this jesus christ who's the son and then there's um jesus christ giving a gift the holy spirit so that's another uh, a part of the kingdom and it seems like you you said kingdom focus according to Bible, what the word says, relationship with Holy Spirit, and then there's this element of belief. So my question is, does one have to be quote unquote saved to access kingdom or did the, you know, what, what happened first? Was it kingdom then saved or is it got to get saved because that's what we're taught in religion. You got to do all these things to get saved to then get what God has to offer or is it a, in a different order, right? Because God is 
a god of order and, mm-hmm. and i understand that in addition to him being a god of order he's also very clear in his wording as well mm-hmm. to effectively communicate his order right so help me with that because i believe a lot of people watching this are like okay so how do you get saved right because mm-hmm. that's a big that's all we talk about in in the church but very little conversation on on systems on the place on the structures on the jurisdiction on the you know the way we operate in business and accumulating resources to operate in like like not too much of that is touched on so help us with that if um if i'm in the right direction or yeah i I understand what you're saying and um it's you i i was not laughing at you i promise It, it it tickles me because of me being where i am now and in my level of belief and where i am in the kingdom the things that that you are addressing are things that i dealt with you know in in pre kingdom Mm-hmm. living if you will um and you asked another one of those myriad type <laughs> questions that have all of these things uh encompassed in it jesus said in matthew 6 and 33 first of all he said seek ye first the first. kingdom of god right and all his righteousness mm-hmm. and all these things mm-hmm. will be added unto you okay that's matthew 6 33 so now let's Let's go. You can't to, interpret uh, that. You can't interpret that. No different. It, and <laughs> seek ye. What does ye mean? Like you, right? You. Uh huh. You. What does, you what does seek, seek mean? What the kingdom seek of God. Mean? Right. What does seek uh-huh. mean? To, to, to go search, after. To go intently after. look for. Yes. Okay. Intently look for. So seek you. You seek first. First. What does first mean? One. First. Not well, last. First thing. Not second. Yeah. Not third. Not fourth. Not fifth. But first, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I mean, that's as clear as day. Yes. The kingdom. Seek ye first the kingdom. <laughs> not, not seek ye first Jesus Christ. Not seek ye, um, get saved. Uh huh. Uh huh. Not, not seek ye, um, get fully baptized, immersed in the ocean or in water with this holy water, and then confess and then surrender your life to me. Uh, da, 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 like, what did it say? Like what is Bible so let's saying, let's right? so let's deal with the, the deal salvation with aspect. Okay. Um, and and my wife and I had a very in depth conversation about this last year, and um, it it caused me to realize how God had been dealing with us. We were both on the same page, and it just brought us to a completely different place as it relates to salvation altogether. And religion um, denominations have pushed and impressed on people, get saved, get saved, get saved. Well, the Bible says, he that endures to the end shall be saved, first of all, okay? Secondly, we have to look at what is salvation? What is being in the kingdom? What does that mean? How do we get into the kingdom? Jesus said, um, he said, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God, except, and then two verses later, he comes back and says, except a man be born of the water and the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. But in order to be in the kingdom, I do not believe that it is as we have been taught in the past. Let me explain that. Um, When I've gone to a plethora of services, in my youth and we get to the end of the service and the preacher makes what we refer to as the altar call and calls for people to come down and pray the prayer of salvation and get saved. Why am I using the air quotes? Because these are things that have been said and these are things that we have impressed upon people that you gotta go down there and you gotta confess your sins and you gotta ask for forgiveness and invite the Lord to come into your heart when Jesus did not at all teach salvation in that manner. In fact, Jesus never taught salvation according to how we've taught it at all. The number one thing, again, that Jesus focused on was our belief in the kingdom, our belief in him being the son of God, and that he was able to do and perform all of the miracles that he performed, and that God sent him to do those things and to seek and save that which was lost. That's that's what Jesus proposed. I I mean, not proposed, but what what he taught to the people to believe and to believe on 
and in the one who sent him, which was the Father, to believe in him. Everything in the Bible, in the New Testament, if you go back, I'm, I'm just going to, I want to use this for reference, and I'm uh, pulling up my phone here purposely and intently. I'm typing in the word believe, and I'm going to go to believe it because I, I like the, the King James version. Okay, so there are a plethora of different scriptural or biblical references where Jesus was talking, and he used the word believe or believeth. For example, um, in Mark 9 and 23, Jesus said unto him, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. Okay. Um, I'll go to another one. Let's go to John. Um, and we're familiar with this. Uh, I'm going to back up to John 3 and 14. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the son of man be lifted up. 15, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Oh boy. Verse 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth on in him, excuse me, should not perish but have everlasting life our salvation is not based on going before god and asking for him to forgive us because as quiet as it's kept now you can take this and believe it or not it's up to you when jesus died he died one time for all sin all time i'm gonna say it again when jesus died he died one time for all sin all time mm -hmm. that means that forgiveness was extended to every person past present at the time when mm -hmm. christ was crucified on the cross and future all the way up until when christ comes back again okay, okay. what does that mean that means that how we have been taught is that we always have to go before god and ask for forgiveness, forgiveness. and so on and so forth. especially when it comes to salvation right Mm -hmm. When it has not, in my opinion, been properly taught that forgiveness exists perpetually and indefinitely. Right. Unquestioned. The right. reason being is because Christ, when Christ said it is finished, that was it. He fulfilled all of the requirements in order for us to receive forgiveness. So now what do we do? It is up to us to openly embrace the forgiveness that God gives us. Yes, I know First John says that God is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I believe that there is a process of that that takes place when you become a believer. Gotcha. When you become a believer, our being in the kingdom is solely based on our belief. It's not necessarily based on our salvation and us going before God and praying what we refer to as the sinners. For God already knows that we've sinned. He's already extended forgiveness right. for us. So, so our, our responsibility at that point is to embrace and receive his forgiveness that he's already extended to us, right? It's mm -hmm. like accident forgiveness. It already exists. You just got to receive it. You just got to go and get it. You don't have to go and ask them for it because it already exists. It's already there for you. Mm -hmm. The kingdom of God is already there for us. It's already there for our asking. We have to receive it and embrace it into our lives. Seek ye first, first. the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things. What are the things? The the things that, that we hope for, the things that 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 we believe the things that we may be seeking god for and then some of the things that we may even be seeking him for may not line up at all with what he has for us or what he's ordained for us according to his perfect kingdom will for us but the more you interact with him the more you develop your relationship with holy spirit the the, the more you hear his voice and hear him talk to you the more his glory is poured out over your life he will show you what things belong in your life and what don't what does not wow this is this is dangerous um <laughs> because what we're presenting or re-presenting you provided at least three scriptures that clearly lays out the what to do first and what salvation is based on meaning belief it is true right this is something that i i do with when i talk to uh, some of my non-believers are, are in betweeners, somewhat souls, or, or I don't know. And I say, well, if the Bible's true and Jesus died, then, and it's said that when he died, it 
that it, and you had said that the sins were forgiven for past all sins past present and future mm -hmm. so that that implies that if i've been forgiven for something that happened 2000 years ago and an act jesus mm -hmm. did something and mm -hmm. he, he paid the price right so simple terms if i go and buy a tv at a store i own it i take it home it's mine but then the store calls me tomorrow and and says hey we need you to verify that you uh, own that tv that doesn't make any sense so it's almost like in religion it's like i have to constantly there's this focus on uh -huh. especially uh -huh. in, the, in the catholic church i have to constantly verify and re-verify and re-verify and re-verify and re-verify re to essentially ask for something that mm -hmm. i already own i've got mm -hmm. this i have the receipt i have the documentation i i uh -huh. have the, i have the word the words saying that it is done and i'm forgiven all i have to do now is is believe in it so what you're getting at in plain terms here is when we're looking at when we're looking at kingdom first seek it kingdom establish a relationship with the holy spirit so now you're unlearning and relearning new things and as you're unlearning and, and relearning new things you start to what believe in those new things and the more you begin to believe in this in this kingdom realm in this system in this place you begin to ask questions like well, well who runs this organization who, who, who's the who's the authority here oh, oh let let me can, may i interject real briefly go ahead <laughs> so and and one word that you keep using that is very very key is belief which is what the kingdom is is solely based on mm -hmm. it's all belief all if you believe in your heart and shall not doubt you can say to this mountain right be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea if you believe it and not doubt when uh, people don't realize and understand how legal the kingdom of god is the government of god is a legal entity where it just like in the natural realm when you go into a courtroom right if you are the defendant there's an accusation that's been made against you and you are the defendant you got a uh, the the plaintiff maybe the government or another individual or group of people that is making this accusation against your life what is the number one thing that is going to uh if if you were facing life in prison or freedom for the rest of your life what is the number one thing that's going to uh, uh dictate it either way is belief the belief of a jury of what the testimony the word of a testimony the bible says that we in revelation we overcame by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony it's the word of a witness another legal term who's giving a testimony another legal term and the testimony that they give if it's in your favor or even whether it's it, it is or not they're if they're telling the truth the whole truth and nothing but the truth so help them god if you are being tried by a jury of your peers it is still up to the jury as to whether or not they want to believe you what causes a hung jury one person that believes differently than everybody else on the jury got 12 people and 11 say oh no he did it and you got one person say mm. I don't think he did. It's all based off of belief. Our legal system, when you get into a court of law, it's all based on belief. Whether it's the judge or the jury or both, it's all based on belief. If um, if somebody posted a news article, news flash, we're looking for Denzel and he did X, Y, Z. He robbed this store. He did this and he did that. If you see him, you need to apprehend him and turn him into the authority. What are you going to have? You're going to have mass pandemonium on your hands. If you step out into the world, people see you, they recognize you, they looking for you mm -hmm. because they heard something on TV. Well, they said that he did such and such and people have a free will to believe whatever it is they want to. But I'm saying to you, what, what I'm stressing is the power of belief, which is what the kingdom is based off of. Our success and failure in the kingdom is solely based on what we believe. What we believe. Got it. So with that, because that's the focus now, is there an 
element because you did mention how um, Jesus addressing, I think it was Nicodemus, about being born again, right? And of water because Jesus mm-hmm. went through the same process with John the Baptist when he got baptized. So what we're not saying is to not do that. We're not mm-hmm. saying not to do it because even Jesus himself did that, but it's also not the first thing thing to do in order to start your path, your journey. Because I think there's a lot of people out there that don't go to church or don't go to a specific congregation or denomination because they feel this this pressure that they're being forced to uh, submit to an authority that they don't know yet, that they don't have a relationship yet that they don't necessarily believe in yet. It's not that they don't believe. And it's not that they mm-hmm. do believe they're kind of like in between. They're like, mm-hmm. hey, I don't, I don't really know. I mean, I've, you know, I've sp- spoken with a lot of atheists. They're like, hey, I don't know that God exists. And I also don't know that he doesn't exist. I'm kind of like in between. And until I can what believe until I can what uh, have evidence in the belief or a relationship or I, I develop something on, until then I'm stuck and mm-hmm. I, I can't go to church because the, the people at church, they, they already exiled me because I, I tell them where I stand and they don't provide enough. And they say, well, you got to get saved and you got to do this and you got to do that in order to see and da, da, da. so there's there's an, a, a mix of order. Now, can you uh, address the part of the baptism, the the um, the act of becoming born again? baptizing kind of provides some clarity in terms of the order in which that occurs in the kingdom well, i believe it's it's simpler than than what we have made, made people to, to be. believe that that it is um when jesus said that except a man be born again he cannot see the kingdom of god that born again is uh referring to not only our spirit i believe but i also believe it's referring to our thought process our mindset uh paul said in in uh romans 12 and 2 he said be not conformed to this world but be ye transformed by what the renewing of your mind the 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 renewal suggests that we had a perfect mental state at some point where we were completely connected with the father because again you got to remember we were made just like him in his image and after his likeness and so when you when you are presented with information from the kingdom the kingdom of god because it is filled with god himself it has the ability to uh to to cause you to believe not force you but cause you through influence why because it is truth at its purest form that is being presented to you and when you make the decision when you choose to become to believe what it is that's being presented to you you thereby then become a believer in the kingdom of god something on the inside of you goes off uh, uh in inside of you it's like with you doing um velocity banking and infinite banking and whatnot that inf- before you became the authority that you are right now that information was presented to you at some time in your life some years ago however long ago it was and you were living life according to a different systematic methodology than what was presented to you. And then when that information was presented to you, something went off on the inside of you that said, hey, this makes sense. And you took what you knew and you put it off to the side to give room and open up to and embrace this new information that was presented to you. That's what being in the kingdom is. That's what salvation is. It is allowing kingdom to come in and reside in you where it belongs, where God intended for it to be in the first place it entails you opening up yourself to a new realm and system of belief whereby you can see a a better different way of living life and being more successful that way than the way i was previously doing things oh okay so address and i and i'm i'm sorry we're we're breaking almost two hours here i want to be conscious of your time are we oh Um, you're you're fine i'm good i I made sure that i was clear for this so (laughs) okay so please um let's address 
the the the, the bat I feel like I'm, I'm still maybe not as clear and I think some of the viewers might need some help on this so you're you're saying that the church religion has made it much harder than what it really is in terms mm -hmm. of salvation being born again and then accessing the kingdom am i quote unquote good secured if i come to the conclusion that a i believe in the kingdom i believe in who runs the kingdom who owns the kingdom who operates the kingdom i have a relationship with the holy spirit and i believe in what jesus did forgiving all my past present and future sins that that alone disregarding getting my head dunked in water or my whole entire body and saying a prayer or saying a a, a, a set of words to prove to others that I am quote-unquote saved and sealed for eternity am I good with just the belief or is there another component at some point in time in this kingdom process where I must uh, show myself approved amongst mm -hmm. amongst other men for I know there's a scripture that talks about you know God saying if you're not willing to be who you are in me to other men then how can I represent you when you're in there in the kingdom heaven which is the place mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I believe um, when you become a, a believer when you begin to develop your relationship with Holy Spirit um, there is a draw there for you to know more uh, which will eventually cause a change in your life if you allow it to. Um, I just believe that communion with the Father, with Holy Spirit, will bring about the, the change where it'll be evident to other people. They'll see it. Um, it's not necessarily anything that you have to, to do. It's not knocking being baptized or baptism in uh, the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues or whatnot. But all of that is, the, uh, well, let's just use uh, 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 with the evidence of speaking in tongues, being baptized in, in the Holy Spirit. That's not something that has to take place or happen in front of people. It doesn't. Okay. Um, my wife got baptized in the Holy Spirit in her bedroom. No one laid hands on me. You know, when, when yeah. I got it, um, I was in the Catholic Church. I was a part of a, a group called uh, the Charismatic Movement, which is the sect of the Catholic Church that believes in laying on of hands and healing and speaking in tongues and being baptized in, in, in Holy Spirit and so on and so forth. And at the end of the program, they have this culmination event where uh, it's called the, the Life in the Spirit Seminar is what it was called. And then they have this big event where all of the dioceses come together. And if you weren't, if you hadn't been filled previously with uh, 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 Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues okay and i use the air quotes with the, the evidence thing because a lot of people uh, believe in praying with with individuals and helping them to to get in i'm not knocking any of that or anything of that and i've i've prayed with people before but not necessarily stay there and labor with them like a lot of other people do but in any case um, we went to this big event and nobody laid hands on me nobody prayed with me and i was filled with Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. It just, it happened for me. I can't exactly tell you when, I just know that it did. I know that I have it. Um, to say, uh, uh, or to go back to what you were saying a moment ago, and to, to say, if you're good, uh, if you are a believer, and if you uh, are seeking first the kingdom and whatnot, I believe that you are. But I also believe that your lifestyle has to be a has reflection of what you, yeah, your your lifestyle has to reflect uh, what you what you truly believe. Because there's a lot of people that that say, "Well, I believe in God." Well, there's a God? lot of people that say that, right, but God? their life, their lifestyle, the life that they live says something different. Which is one of the things that, um, and forgive me for those of you who call yourself Christian, uh, that that kind of has me bent sideways with people that call themselves Christians. Because if you are a believer in the kingdom of God, there are certain things that ought not be a part of your lifestyle. There are certain things that you ought not do or portray 
or allow to come out of your mouth, uh, things of that nature. So in other words, again, your lifestyle has to be commensurate. It has to be a reflection of what you truly believe. If, if I say I'm a kingdom believer, you can best believe that I live my life in a manner where you see it on me. I've had people to tell me where I've gone to places and they just see like an aura on me or they feel a peace and a comfort when they're around me. I've had people to just open up, just start telling me their life story. Don't know me from Adam, but because they feel the peace of God on the inside of me that comes from Holy Spirit. I didn't do that on my own. That's because of the work that he did in me. And so I make my life, uh, uh, my lifestyle commensurate to what I say I believe. Now, that doesn't mean that I'm not still working on, on things uh, on me. Right. But that has to do with management, which is very important in the life of the believer. Yeah. And when someone is newly uh, uh, converted, if you will, in being a believer in the kingdom, yeah, there are still some things that, that are going to exist and it's going to take time for those things to fall away, to fall off of them because they have to renew their mind. Their spirit, we, you got to remember, their spirit has been regenerated, but the old way, the flesh still remembers how we used to live, how we used to hang out and party up and, you know, turn up and get high and drink and all that kind of stuff. Um, and it's, it's different for every individual because every, every God made all of us differently. The, the kingdom call and purpose that's on my life is different from what yours is, right? We serve the same God and we're all a part of the body of Christ, one body. But if you look at our physical body, we got a ton of different parts. The eye doesn't, doesn't perform the function of the ear. And by no means do you ever see any of our body parts trying to perform the function of another ever. Right. So saying all that to say that when a new person comes into the kingdom or for any of you that are watching this, that make the decision, take the leap and to become a believer and come into the kingdom, um, don't set a bunch of unrealistic expectations for yourself, which is where I think we get caught up or hung up a lot of times. Yeah. We put unrealistic expectations on ourselves as well as other people. And God don't even do that with us because he knows how long it's going to take for you to stop cussing. He knows how long it's going to take for you to stop sleeping around, stop drinking, stop stealing, lying, whatever it is that you yeah. are doing that is uh, in direct contribution venture to his word yeah. you know he knows how long it's going to take for you to come out of that so you have to give him time and room to to work on you or to work on the individual yeah. for those things to fall away you have to you have to give the relationship with god with the holy spirit with jesus christ time to grow yes it's just like for my viewers yes. that are just for my viewers yes. that are doing velocity banking you're doing infinite banking you need to give it time to learn the concept, to to engage Why? the strategy, you have to watch the videos, you have to study up, then you actually start practicing it. And guess what? You might make a mistake when you do a velocity bank. And so in that mistake, you learn what not to do and you learn what to do. And then you learn how to correctly right. position yourself in, in righteousness in terms of velocity banking, just talking like the fundamentals of achieving the highest results that that concept that that idea can provide you and it's it works the same way in the Absolutely. And I, I have to say as a believer what a relief it is to not have to um go through all these preliminary steps to achieve quote unquote eternal life it's actually quite simple and there's an order to it it's a very logical reasonable expectation to say hey wait first seek the kingdom first i know you don't know this jesus guy and what he did for you and all this stuff and all the miracles and he walked on water and he fed fish and bread and he fed five thousand people in two days and he did all this miracle stuff i know you're probably not going to believe that right away okay it's going to take some time but let me introduce you to the kingdom a tangible legal entity system with a jurisdiction with an authority that is recognized internationally amongst every country all the way up to the Hague Convention of the United States Charter, recognized by even Satan himself, recognized. Even the, the demonic angels 
the prince of the air um, other countries recognize the authority that the kingdom of the highest authority has in the universe so even non-believers even countries that don't practice the faith even your greatest arch enemy satan himself with all his uh demonic angels recognize the jurisdiction the authority the ecclesiastical sovereign state of what is going on here the kingdom it's right mm -hmm. so that is very logical to the to the new person be like oh wow this, this is actually something i can participate in as a member as a as a call a say a client you know just just experience i can walk through your doors and i can see how you live and how you operate and i can learn the strategies in terms of how you do business and how you how you actually multiply your seed how you plant your seed and grow this mm. harvest aka a business aka an idea aka an invention and how you generate profits and how you ethically treat your clients and your other members of your absolutely organization. so it seems so logical and then you come to a state of belief right so for me those who are watching i don't know about you but it's a it's like a, a weight off my shoulders because you know i i'm constantly in the hunt um even prior to meeting you and coming across miles Monroe and other other people i listen to for me it was a matter of like man i don't know how long i'm gonna be on planet earth but i i at least want to secure my salvation so the catholics say you got to do this i i did it right and then i went to the christians and the christians said no you got to do this you got to get baptized in the name of the father the son and the holy spirit and you got to do and you got to do full immersion right and i said okay i'll do that right and so i'm like over here as a young you know believer and i'm i'm excited for the kingdom but i'm hearing so many different ways to get there mm -hmm. and in my logical brain the way it works is well let me at least do these things because my probability of success would go up that's kind of like how mm -hmm. my, my brain works i'm like well catholic is a powerful strong religion been in existence for as long as god knows when and so is christianity really really long and so it has these ways and it seems like these different groups really gotten it you know in line you know they talk about getting born again physically getting born uh, again mentally getting born again spiritually like there's a the whole three-part process so I, in my head in the past i was just like i'm just gonna do it all right <laughs> to secure it. but i gotta tell you that causes a lot of stress because mm -hmm. What I, what I began to realize was I, maybe I wasn't necessarily doing it for me, but rather for the confirmation and approval of others. And that creates a cloud, a fog, where I'm like, the only approval I need is from Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. Yeah. And if through the Holy Spirit, I receive it, now it's a matter of how do I verify that? So as we come to a close here we went over a lot of things one last thing i'd like to hone in on a little bit more is verifying the holy spirit when it communicates with me how do i know that i'm actually talking or communicating or receiving frequency or communication from the heavenly place to the earth realm via the holy spirit when i know when i know that i myself have a free will so i have a mind of my own that can play tricks on me then there's this whole uh, uh satan guy and all his angels that operates in the spirit realm um and then there's the influence of man and others that get in my head that creates precepts that become philosophy right so how do mm -hmm. i how do i verify that i am actually talking to the holy spirit is there a formula uh, uh for that to affirm that yep that's confirmation god told me that absolutely um i was actually going to pull up uh a biblical passage there's one in particular that i'm looking for where uh, Jesus uses the word uh, uh, stranger's voice, if I recall correctly. But in John 10, 27, Jesus is speaking and he said, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. I think um, that is probably, if not the 
most simplistic, one of the simplest ways of knowing that you are talking to Holy Spirit. And I believe the more you develop your relationship with Holy Spirit, uh, the more you will become familiar with his voice. Uh, I've used this analogy and it's gone over extremely well before in the past. Um, let's say when you were a kid, when you were 10 years old, right? Your mother goes to this huge conference, right? They have childcare and she drops you off at this room where there's childcare and there's probably like 500 kids in this room and a good handful of them named Denzel. And you might have several mothers whose child is named Denzel. They come stand at that door and they may holler, Denzel, Denzel, right? And you can tell there's something on the inside of you. You're playing and carrying on and doing doing your thing, doing what you do. And something in you knows when you hear that, that's not my mama. But when your mama comes and stands at the door and she hollers your name, Denzel, Napoleon Rodriguez. <laughs> no, she might not say your whole name, but, I should, but she'll call you just by your first name only. Right. Denzel, mm. you know your mother's voice. Why? because you have relationship with her, because you've been around her long enough to know you've been in a multiplicity of situations in hearing her voice, and there's no mistaking her voice when you hear it. Same thing and the same way it is Man. for us being in the kingdom. That's good. The That's more good. we spend time with God, the more we commune with him, the more we fellowship with him, the more we spend time not just reading the written word of God, but listening to hear him talk to us. And then he can verify it through the word if he chooses to. Right. But there are things I know that God has spoken to me. I know it was him and I don't have to go to the word to verify it because I know his voice. I know his voice when I hear it. If my mama calls me right now, I know my mama's voice. My dad, God rest his soul, he passed away some years ago. If my dad called me, I know my dad's voice. Why? Because I have relationship with them. It is the relationship that determines the clarity. That's a good word. I want to write that down. That's yeah. what I it is the relationship that determines the clarity or the level of clarity that you have in being able to hear the other person's voice. Mm -hmm. So the more you spend time, let, let's I take give you another example, real close to home. Your fiance. If you if if somebody said Denzel called for you on line one and you picked up the phone and she said, Hey baby, you know, or it's so whatever your <laughs> whatever your language is, uh -huh. however you communicate with her, she will say something that lets you know this is her. Right. And there's no and mistake. <laughs> No mistake. And I'll take it a step further to make this even more logical. Even if you had an impersonator trying to be, so let's say my girlfriend plays a trick on me and the caller ID is her name and everything. And maybe I just look at it quick and I say, hello. And then it's another woman trying to impersonate my girlfriend, uh -huh. even through the phone, I will know within seconds because there's a language and a relationship that I have with my girlfriend that that extends or transcends uh -huh. the environment. Uh -huh. Like I don't even need to see her to know that no. her uh -huh. voice. I'll do another one for you. Uh, <laughs> another good one. I, I've had relationships with a lot of sets of twins over the years. And uh, there's one particular set, good friends of my, my wife and I, they live in Texas and it didn't take me long to be able to distinguish who whose voice was whose or who was talking. Mm -hmm. The more I communicated with them, the easier it was for me to be able to hear it. their voice sound very, very similar, very similar. Mm -hmm. But I, my ear has just been trained to be able to hear the subtle nuances, to listen to tonality, to listen to draw uh, uh, of of certain consonants or vowels when they're speaking and saying certain words. I can tell the difference. I can tell I'm, I'm I can tell this is Roger, and I can tell this is Rod. I can tell who I'm talking to. Again, same thing with Holy Spirit. The more you become acclimated to dealing with him, uh, uh, being relational with him, speaking to him and being attentive to hear his voice and not listen, not just in your prayer time, not just in your in your your time that you set aside to be quiet, just you and him. I'm also talking about when you're going throughout your day, 
being able to hear him when he talks, uh, speaks to you at a moment's notice and knowing that it's him. That's key. Mm -hmm. That's very key. And all of that plays a part in you being able to hear. So that's, that's how you know. Yeah. And again, I, the reason why I wanted to address the verification process, cause I'm a very logical type of a person. Like it's not about, okay, the scripture said that, but like, what does that mean? You know, like break it down. And I know I have a lot of clients that are also logical, just like me, where like Denzel, write it out. Like I get what you're saying about all the hype, but, but write it, show me the numbers because then yeah. it's, it's, yeah. it's there. It's verifiable, right? Yeah. It's not just some concept. It's not just some idea. The idea is backed up with it's, it's asset backed. Right. And yeah. in, when we're dealing with the faith realm, it's, it's asset backed word by truth, by the whole, that logical sense of how do you know the voice of your mother, the voice of your father, if you're not in the same room, you're on the phone with them. How do you know it's their voice? You just, you know, because of you the know. relationship you've built with them, your ear is sensitive to uh the the frequency that their mouth that their uh, vocal cords are projecting and it works the same way like you know when you get a bad thought versus a good thought mm -hmm. you know that if i go to that strip club if i go to that bar alone <laughs> something in your voice is saying ah, we might do something tonight you know and you you can either shut the voice off and replace it with a different voice and then there's this other voice whom i give credit where credit is due holy spirit voice that it's not even your own voice in your mind like i know how i sound in my head both the good and the bad thoughts that come in and then i know there's a third voice the holy spirit where it just says something i'm like whoa like that wasn't even a thought I had and I was doing something. I was writing out some numbers and then I just got a thought and I was like, oh man, that's a really good idea. And before I give credit to myself, I'm like, oh, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yep. Give them credit where credit uh -huh. due. So for those of you who are in between, you don't know somewhat. So you went into this religion. You didn't like it. You had a bad experience. Here is an opportunity to revisit in a very logical process way of kingdom kingdom is asset back recognized internationally all over the world so you have the highest authority recognized in the entire universe so you have that and then the process is to seek it first something that's real oh, that's not right. so hard that's not so hard to seek something that is real that i can actually find it i can see it dwell in it hang around with some other people who are in it and get some new perspective and then as i'm doing that i can build a relationship to the point where i believe and have trust in that relationship, whether it's with Howard, whether it's with Denzel or someone else in the kingdom to, to authorize some of the things that I'm doing or to give me authority or to verify some of the thoughts that I have that are either good or bad and we can weigh them. We can logically weigh them, right? Mm -hmm. And then come to the full conclusion of be full belief in truth. And now you're, you're walking in that lifestyle. So there's no question that you have eternal life because i know there's a lot of christians a lot of catholics there's a lot of methodists there's a lot of baptists there's a lot of first church of god and church of christ a bunch of you that you went through your religious process and you're still questioning am i saved am I, mm. in heaven? I know that because i did the same thing Ugh, is this enough what i'm doing because i'm still doing this stuff and i'm trying to stop it you know, is it affecting my my yeah God? because we live in a world of 99 percent exactly <laughs> nothing can ever be uh, completely a hundred you know it's always 99 or 99.9 right, like, you know yeah you're never quite there so that's why you have to always constantly go back and verify that you bought the tv when it's been sitting in your living room for god knows how many years you got the receipt that the store is not calling you back right and neither is god god's not i i i don't I've never, I can honestly say I've never felt like God told me that I needed to do a specific action over and over and over and over again to verify what he already did for me. It's almost yeah. like I got to say, it's almost like I have to uh, uh, show proof like every single time, 
You know, it's mm-hmm. not like I'm it's not like I'm traveling from one country to another where I have to show my passport. I get that. That's a one time thing. But it's almost like what if I keep going to the same house, right? I live in this I live in this house and I gotta keep showing the landlord the lease that I went. <laughs> right. That doesn't make exactly. any sense. He already knows you live there. He gave you the keys. <laughs> oh dear. He gave you the keys. Your landlord gave you the keys to Come on, man. Man. Yeah. As long as you you know, the transactions are verified. You keep paying rent. You're going to keep living there. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so I feel like in a way, that's kind of like how God operates. You know, even when we're dealing in the, in the money sense, like as long as you operate your finances, your lifestyle, your relationships, your ethics, your values, according to, to his, it's verified in the being. Like if I'm being kingdom, then I'm verified. I'm authorized, essentially. Mm-hmm. Right. And you just keep operating. And what a relief, right? So I want to turn it back to you. Any um, closing remarks, any actionable steps that you want to share with my audience? I'm going to share my screen as you talk to guide people to your website. For those of you who are watching, you can click click the link in the description below that takes you to my website, denzelrodriguez.com. You go to resources, you'll see a link that sends you right to Howard's website. Or as Howard talks, he can say the name of his website. And I can put it in the comment section so you guys can check that out as well. So I give the mic back to you. Again, the, the Bible says that the kingdom of God is not meat or drink, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Uh, righteousness being in right standing and living a righteous life according to the standard that God already set forth for us to live by in the earth realm. Um, you have to understand that Commonwealth, one of the books that uh, Brother Denzel was referring to that he uh, was sent by myself. Uh, in that book, it's basically talking about the system that God designed for us to live by in the earth realm that not only meets, but alleviates me in the life of every kingdom citizen in the earth realm. Um, the peace. A lot of people say they're believers, but a lot of people don't have peace in their lives. Uh, God wants us to have peace. Matter of fact, in Isaiah 9 and 7, the Bible says, of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Another scripture in the New Testament says, and the peace of God, which passes or surpasses, excuse me, all your understanding shall keep your heart and mine through Christ Jesus. God wants us to live a life of peace. And in the kingdom, there is plenty of peace to be had. Peace from your your cares, peace from the, the worrying about bills and not having enough money, peace and being able to take care of yourself and your family. All of those things are taken care of in the kingdom of God. In fact, there is a statement that my wife and I Uh, a quote often that the Lord gave to me some years ago, and that is where the kingdom of God is present, need cease to exist, right? Let me explain that really quickly. Um, I understand that Philippians 4.19 says, but my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. But the, the definition of the word need in and of itself means a lack of something wanted or deemed necessary. And if we can agree that in the kingdom of God is everything that we could ever want or need, and Jesus said in Luke 17, 21, that the kingdom of God is within you and there's no lack in the kingdom, then everything that we need is already on the inside of us in the form of the kingdom of God. Now we have to change our perspective and our thought paradigm and how we think and see this thing instead of looking at, well, I need this, or I'm, when you say you need something, you're declaring lack in your life. You're declaring that you're lacking something and God lacks nothing. We said that a moment ago that we would agree that in God, there's no lack, no insufficiency, no deficiency in him. We now have life requirements and the definition of the word require means to claim or ask for by right and authority. Those of us that are legal citizens in the kingdom of God, we have a right to claim for and ask for things in the kingdom of God, things that we feel that our life requires, not so much that we need, but that our life requires in the earth realm. Amen. So there is uh, uh, all of our provisions being made 
met or being made fulfilled in the kingdom. Everything that we could ever want, dream for, hope, desire, whatnot, it's in the kingdom. Which is why I go back to Matthew 6 and 33. Jesus says, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness, all his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. So righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost, and you'll have joy. Uh, I'm telling you, I, 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 I have joy in my life. There is joy to be had in the kingdom, not just happiness, joy, uh, joy that, that gives me a good feeling in knowing that I am safe, that I am secure in the kingdom, that everything in my life is accounted for. So I want to thank, uh, thank you, Denzel, for allowing me the opportunity to come and dialogue with you and to share about kingdom theology and, and to talk about all things kingdom. As far as my books are concerned, um, you can look me up on Amazon if you want. I, even though I have my books on my website, they still point to Amazon right now. Uh, but on my website, howardrosejr.com, which you will find under the resources section on uh, Brother Denzel's uh, website. And you can go there and see all of the books that I have and uh, order any of them. The, the ebook versions are also available. They'll take you to the same place uh, on Amazon uh, to be able to purchase those. But we're talking about the kingdom. We're talking about a better way to live. I've got more things that are coming. My wife is, is publishing. She's putting out books and, and has more things that are coming. Um, in fact, one of the next, the, actually the very next uh, 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 book to be published from myself is going to be a combination of the three books that you saw on uh, on Brother Denzel's whiteboard there at the top, Understanding Kingdom Commonwealth, Understanding Kingdom Life, and Understanding Kingdom Government with a bunch of additional content, a lot of things that I have pinned uh, over the last few years since publishing all of those books. There's a whole lot more that's coming, but this is going to be under the title Understanding the Kingdom Volume 1, and it's going to en encompass all three of those books plus some additional content. I think that you're going to like it. There's a, a, a Kingdom Government glossary that's going in there, a lot more details and explanation about some things that... Uh, that the Lord has dealt with me on over the years. One of them dealing with John 10, 10, where Jesus says he came that we might have life and that more abundantly. Uh, I'm going to be going in and breaking all of that down, what that word abundantly means uh, and how you can apply it to your life. A uh, very, very powerful revelation. But uh, that's basically it. That's where you can find me. Uh, and we've got a whole lot more that's coming. Uh, we've got a, a website that we are uh, working diligently to, to put together and release to everyone where my wife and I will be releasing more Kingdom content. There'll be classes on there. Uh, our books will be on there. We're going to do live broadcasts from there. Uh, and it's taken us a little bit of time to put this together, but uh, we want it to be right. We want it to encompass and to tell everything about us. So just give us a little bit of time. And as soon as we have it ready and uh, uh, have it uh, in a position where you can go and begin to partake of the content and become a member of the site and everything, we will certainly be conveying that information to Brother Denzel and to the rest of you all. So thank you again for the opportunity. Thank you so much. Thank you, Howard, for spending over two hours with me. Really appreciate it. The audience will appreciate it as well. They're already used to this because I always do long classes anyways because I like to dive deep. I'm not, I'm not into fluff. I like to really just crack open these codes of life, keys sure. to the kingdom. Sure because that's what's deep in my heart and every now and then aside from the numbers it's important to see the the faith component the belief in the numbers to achieve the results yeah. that you want to achieve you got to have both so being able yeah. to access both elements really just taking advantage of all the tools that are at our disposal as kingdom citizens and really leaning into that so thank you so much for sure. spending this time with me i really look forward to the next session uh, another class-like setting where we can actually have some audience with us. So I'll be sure to uh, possibly do a live stream or invite you into the kingdom community that I have. And 
um, have get some live Q and A from the audience. I think I would love that. that. Really, yeah. really helpful and uh, really you know help people take the next step into their faith journey and their financial freedom journey. Right? It, it's it's interchangeable. It's intertwined with both. Right? So Absolutely. God bless everyone. Enjoy the rest of your day, and we'll be talking soon. Absolutely.